I am Georgina Klieg and I teach in the English department. I teach uh, creative writing and disability studies. I wanted to start by saying um, something about how happy I am that the On the Same Page program made this book available in accessible format. Um, because, you know, on the surface, a book like this that's predominantly images would not be accessible to people who are um, blind and visually impaired. And so, you know, would seem to discriminate against uh, including uh, those people. But you did make it accessible, and uh, what I received was a PDF, an accessible PDF, um, where I can access the text through my computer. And I'll just so you can hear what it sounds like. I'll just start it up here. World, it includes Ted Living, Bill Bell Orient, Melvin Calvin, Owen Chamberlain, William F. John, Donald A. Glazer, Edwin F. McMillan, John A. Okay. Northrop, Glenn A. Seaborn, Emilio Center, Wendella, Stanford, Stanford. That's just a listing of some faculty um, that's in the text. Anyway, so in a way, I think that I, I, I have come to this text in a very atypical way because I read through the whole text from beginning to end, right? And I think the more typical way that people deal with a book like this is you leaf through and you find an image that's interesting and then maybe you read the caption and maybe you read the, the text on the facing page, but you don't necessarily think of it as a continuous text. So I was interested in that. I was, I was sort of surprised by how much text there is. And, um, you know, I think in this project, Nancy Newhall maybe isn't getting as much attention as Ansel Adams. But I'm here to say that this, this text is a monumental uh, enterprise uh, because she, you know, she has to give the history of the university, uh, the history of the various campuses, and then really quite detailed um, accounts of different departments and different uh, research facilities and different researchers across the whole university take that massive amount of material and, and distill it down into a text and then somehow key that text, link that text to the Adams images. It's just a, a sort of phenomenal enterprise. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is not so much the images but the text uh, that surrounds it and comment on sometimes the juxtaposition between text and image. When is the text really uh, defining something in the image and when is it somehow set, uh, uh, skewed slightly. We get these various spreads you know, about the different campuses or about different departments or different individuals. And then sometimes the, the movement from one page or one spread to the next, uh, there isn't necessarily a transition, you know, as there would be in an essay. Um, and sometimes those are sort of jarring so one, one place where I found it particularly jarring was here in this spread. In this image, the caption says Charter Day, uh, 1964, and it's an image of um, Adlai Stevenson, who was speaking at that event. And then here, on the, this um, quite densely printed page, um, we have a lot of information about the faculty at, at Berkeley, in particular, um, but also kind of a, a history of faculty protest on the Berkeley campus, a paragraph about anti-German sentiment during and after World War I, and how that affected faculty, many of the faculty, particularly in the sciences, who had been educated in Germany and, you know, things around that. A paragraph about protests around the uh, loyalty oath in the anti-communism period in the 1950s. And then the last paragraph on the page references the student protests of 1964-65, uh, the free speech movement protests, though it doesn't use that term. It's a little bit unexpected because so much of the tone of the text is this kind of triumphal, a uh, positive uh, account of uh, the university and uh, its uh, goals and standards and so on and so forth. And so I was actually kind of pleased that included in all of that there would be this history of protest. But then you turn the page and the image here and the caption there is about the marching band. 
And it was so jarring when I read it, I actually thought that maybe it had skipped a page because it seemed to be going from uh, this account of dissent on the Berkeley campus to kind of extracurricular activities of the marching band and college football and, and so on and so forth. And there are other instances in the, in the book where you have that, that kind of funny shift from, from page to page and to, uh, spread to spread. Um, which I think I noticed more because I was reading the text as if it was a continuous uh, narrative. I was interested to read an article uh, that you sent me uh, by Nancy Newhall about um, techniques of captioning. There was an article that she wrote for Aperture magazine where she was an editor and talked about the whole problem about what, is the, what does a caption do, what is the text doing? with an image. Oh, this is such a, this is Professor so-and-so, and this is uh, his graduate student, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but sometimes the captions are referencing something from the, the text uh, around them, uh, and sometimes they're even doing something a little bit more uh, creative, um, that they're uh, evoking something else. And so since I was accessing this book primarily as text rather than images, sometimes I came across, uh, upon uh, captions where I immediately had to go find somebody to tell me what the picture was because the, the caption it didn't explain that to me. Uh, and one of them was this, this image here. And the caption reads, uh, if paintbrushes are more delicate than tweezers in the handling of small forms of life. Okay, and this is in a, a spread about biological controls and about the study of insects and so on and so forth. And it was an image atypical of Adam's images in that when I asked people to say, what is this a picture of, people generally had a hard time saying right off. It didn't immediately announce itself uh, as, oh, that's Wheeler Hall with the campanile behind it. Um, but what it turns out to be is actually a hand holding a glass dish of some sort um, that has some kind of insects in it. And there is a paintbrush that I guess is pushing the insects around. But what people find sort of disconcerting <laughs> is since the glass is transparent, it's as if it's an image of someone holding some bugs in, in their hand. You know, it's quite an interesting read in the end. I didn't, I, I was sort of surprised. I mean, in the beginning, it reads a lot like, uh, you know, a college catalog um, on steroids, you know, that, that that's, gives you this impression, oh, I'd love to go to that college. Uh, but then when it gets into the sort of um, research component of the university and where all these different um, departments and scientists and uh, institutes are described, uh, it becomes something else.